India bat big in Australia, India bat long in Australia and they set Australia an absolute mountain to climb in the Border Gavaskar Trophy Series opener at Perth. Who better to look back on a day of batting grind than Cheteshwar Pujara? The last time India batted as long in Australia, you were making runs for fun in Sydney back in 2019. It's got to be a day that gives India immense satisfaction just to grind an attack out the way they have. Yes, of course. I think it was imp important for Indian batters to get some runs, especially after we lost against New Zealand 3-0. Uh, the pitches were tough then in, in India and batters didn't get a big score. But this was a perfect platform for all the batters to come out, spend some time and get a big 100. It, it's not about just spending time, but it's also about having enough runs on the board, which always gives you that confidence. And the way KL and Yashashvi started yesterday, uh, Yashashvi carried on today. Unfortunately, KL got out. But he still got important 76 for the Indian team. And the way Yashashvi batted today, I think it was a brilliant inning. Uh, it was a pleasure to watch the way he was batting. And after getting out in the first innings, it's never easy when you when you scored zero in the first innings. There is a lot of pressure. But he played his natural game. He made some adjustments. He didn't play too many shots early on. He was a bit cautious. But once he was set, he played a fluent knock. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about Yashashvi Jaiswal. What did you see him change in this game? What should give him the most satisfaction? I think uh, the mental change, the mental aspect uh, where you know that I have played a drive shot in the first innings which wasn't the ball to play that drive. Then you have to make that adjustment. Yes, you have to make a technical adjustment. You need to ensure that you allow the ball to come at you. But at, at the same time, you just have to tell your uh, instinct that I can't play the uh, drive shot, especially early on when the ball is new because the ball seems around a bit. Once the ball gets little old, then he was playing his drive shot. So, uh, I think those adjustments were really commendable and uh, he scored a big 100. Mm. He scores a 100 and he gets to 150 and that's the way it should be. I think once you score a 100 and being an opener, if you score a big 100, the pressure is always on the opposition. And that is such a good sign because it's the hallmark of the top batters in test cricket that when you get to that 100, you make it big. You had a habit of it yourself. It is and it is never easy to score a big 100 because once you get to 100, after that your body, body is fatigued, mm. your uh, mental strength goes down a bit because mentally you feel fatigued, you have been on the field, you have spent a lot of time, you have been concentrating for hours and hours and to carry on from there, it requires a lot of, one is uh, patience, one is concentration, one is your fitness and he has all of that was given great company by KL Rahul. They finished with a 201 run stand. The first time a visiting opening pa uh, pair has shared 200 plus in Australia since 1991. But Jaiswal didn't end the day as India's only centurion, Virat Kohli, who last hit 100 in Sena countries in Perth in 2018, now has another 100. That must feel like a big monkey off his back. Of course, uh, Virat uh, was struggling a bit. He's a great player, but when you don't have a 100, uh, on your back, then you always tend to feel a little bit. So that monkey is off the back now. He's back to scoring hundreds the way he, he started his innings. Because first innings, we know that uh, he got out to a ball, which was a decent ball, but he could have avoided that. But he made some technical changes. And then second innings, Australians did target the same area. They uh, kept on bowling at fourth stump and he left the ball really, really well. So those first 15 minutes to half an hour's time was very crucial because the, he was facing the second new ball and uh, the way he started and after that once he said no one can stop him, look the way he was driving the ball, the way he was playing his straight drive, cover drive, even on the onside you know that he's back in form. Could you shed some more light on just the technical adjustment not, com not just compared to the first innings but also the way he's batted in the last few years? Well, uh, I'll first uh, talk about the way he was standing in the first innings. He was standing on middle and off. And when you are standing on middle and off, uh, if the balls are on fifth stump, you tend to play them. You feel like you need to play them. But second innings, he moved to middle and off, uh, uh, sorry, middle and leg. And then you know where your off stump is. And the moment the ball was little wide, he started leaving those balls which is very important in Australian conditions. Because if you know, your, uh, if you know where your off stump is, then you are leaving the ball well, you are defending the ball well and when you are defending, the ball doesn't go behind. Mm. Seventh Test 100 in Australia, only Jack Hobbs has more for a visiting batter. 
There were also runs from Nitish Reddy, who's enjoyed himself a good debut test. Contributions in both innings with the bat and very different innings. Yes, and this was a perfect platform for him to come out and express uh, himself. Uh, we know that he's an aggressive player. Uh, he likes to play shots. And today we saw that the kind of shots, the kind of uh, ability he has. He didn't need any time. He didn't need to face five or ten balls. From ball one, we knew that he, he can score runs, but he showed that even without spending a lot of time at the crease, he could play shots and he has a lot of talent. I am sure his contribution will be very important going forward in the Test Series. But I, should, I, I think he should carry on the way he has been batting uh, in the game. Things might be different in the second Test match. It will be a pink ball, but I think his approach should be very similar. Quick thoughts on Australia's bowling. Were you surprised by how ineff ineffective they seemed for large parts of that stay? I think one of the reasons is uh, they tend to bowl back of length a lot more. They don't target the stump. Whereas if you look at the India's bowling in the first innings and the way we started even in the second innings, we are bowling in the stumps. We are targeting the stumps. Most of the ball are hitting the stumps and that's the strength. And another thing I would say is that we are looking to kiss the pitch rather than Aussies who, has, who are a bit taller. They are looking to hit the deck. And that's where you get that extra bounce. Where if you look at the way Bumrah bowls, the way Siraj bowls, they try and uh, skid the ball. And most of the times when, when you're looking to skid the ball, it hits the stumps. From what you saw on day three, have we seen sure indications of the pitch starting to deteriorate and go up and down as you'd mentioned it would? Yes, it has. And uh, I think it, it, start, it has started to go down a bit more, and which is a big concern for the Aussie batters. Because they are not used to the low bounce, they are used to high bounce and that's where I think uh, you know, our bowling will be even more effective because we are always trying to attack the stumps and if we carry on doing that and the odd ball stays low, it will be an unfortunate dismissal for Aussie batters. Final question then, deteriorating pitch, 500 plus to chase, have India built a mountain too tall for Australia? Yes, definitely, there is no doubt about that, it's just a matter, uh, it's, it will be interesting to see whether Aussies will be able to bat the entire day on day four. I don't think they'll be able to chase the target, but will they make our bowlers work hard to earn their wickets or will it be easy? We'll, have, we'll find out on day four. All right, day three, called the moving day. The test match moved a lot and seems like in India's favour.